One, two, three. Welcome to ATV TV. I'm Darren Dance here with Brian Johnson at uh, Ballarat on Thursday morning. Brian, um, eight degrees outside, it's a bit chilly. It's freezing today, Darren. It's been raining pretty heavily up in Ballarat Way and a little bit down Melbourne, hoping it stays away before Saturday. Yeah, here we are on the um, eve of uh, Caulfield Cup weekend. So finally it's come round. It's hard to believe that um, this year's already flying by and we're in October, but we've had plenty to look forward to, and certainly this weekend's going to be no exception. Let's have a look at last week's results, and we'll start off with uh, Sir Dylan, who ran up in New South Wales last week. Brian and I thought um, that was a pretty disappointing run. Yeah, he just hasn't, he just hasn't uh, delivered on what he's promised to date, and I'm not quite sure where we're going to go with him next. I think his next run will tell us everything. Chris is talking about stepping him up to 2400. Um, we've had a discussion about taking the blinkers off and uh, riding him a little bit quiet. I feel that um, his last three or four runs where he's been ridden on the speed with blinkers, he's looked one pace late, and we might be better off taking the blinkers off and uh, ride him back and see if he can finish off. So Chris has taken that on board, so um, let's see what happens in, in his next run there. On Sunday, we had Lucky Lion down at um, Singapore um, over the 1600. We, we thought he'd win that race. He certainly loomed up on the corner to win that race, but um, he was pretty plain late, Brian, and probably another disappointing run. Yeah, every chance this time. He's perfect run behind the leaders. Pulled out in the straight plenty of time and loomed up the challenge, but just didn't finish off. I'm not sure if he didn't run the 1600 or he felt the ground or, um, you know, he just needed the run. So, yeah, disappointing there. And then yesterday at... Um, Rose Hill, we had a basso, the Chris Wallach trained a basso, having his third start for us. And once again, he runs second. Um, it was an outstanding run. I thought he actually had it 200 out, but the Dali horse just peeled out and went bang. So, um, a second, Ryan, another second. Yeah, just nailed him on the line. And this, this is a good horse. I think he's only going to get better from his preparation. Next time in, I think you're going to see a lot better horse and he'll be winning races for sure. Yeah, he just looks like he needs 2,000 and further. And I think, he, as you say, he'll be better next time. So. Yeah, it'll be a quiet week there with just the three runners. Now, before we get on to this week's runners, Brian, um, you spoke to Fluro Man and he's some special offer. He says he's a racehorse owner and now he's a racehorse tipster and to celebrate it, whoever wins ATV tipping competition on Saturday will win $500, courtesy of Betfair. $500. Well, this is what Fluro Man had to say. I'm here with Fluro Man and it doesn't get much bigger than ATB tipping on Caulfield Cup Day. Now tell us about this big prize on offer, Fluro Man. Someone once said to me, let's get ridiculous. I said, let's get tipping instead. Bet they are putting up $500 in cash this weekend for first prize in the ATB tipping. That's right, $500 for the ATB tips are on Saturday, you can return the most money. And don't forget, with Dan Dino going around, all owners get 20% on top of their winnings. So back down Dino on Betfair and get a whopping 20% and also go in the running to win $500 courtesy of the ATB tip-in. Who's going to win the Caulfield Cup for our man? Dan Dino, the Black Beast will win, BJ. Not worried about the wide gate? Wide gate means better odds. That's right, and Betfair means better odds. Good luck with your tip-in. Well, there you go, that's Fluoro, man. If that doesn't rock your socks, nothing will. Um, well, things change this week, Brian. We've got 10 runners between now and uh, Monday night, so let's whip through them. Um, today, we're, as soon as we finish here, we're going to jump in the car and shoot down to Warnable, where we've got two runners. Um, overnight, they had a lot of rain there, and the tracks are slow six, and it could get downgraded, so I'm not sure how that's going to suit the uh, two fillies by Testa Rossa we have in at Warnable. Um, let's start with Chloe Anna, um, trained by Darren Weir, uh, Barrier 10, Michelle Payne. Um, Look, uh, her half-sister ran third in the Oaks. Uh, she's quite a nice filly. You saw her this morning down at the stable. She looks outstanding. Yeah, she looks ready to go, actually. And her last run was an improved effort. And I think Michelle Payne on board will probably hold two soft hands. I'll be able to just guide her home, hopefully. Yeah, I think um, she nearly pulled my arm out of my joint this morning when I was walking her around. <laughs> I don't think that was a smart move, but uh, the 1400 will suit, and um, Darren's got a bit of an opinion of Chloe Anna, so we look forward to that run today. The other fillies, the last start runner, Matthew Williams trained tons of Rossa. Uh, barrier 8, Ryan Maloney. Uh, she was a, did plenty wrong last start, Ryan, but was still too good and another promising Testa Rossa filly. Yeah, she's going well and Matty's done a great job with this horse, trying to get her to settle and the pity's starting to drop. It's, well, she's up in class today uh, after her maiden win and 
I expect her to be raising up sort of probably midfield and then running home strongly like she did last time, and she's in, she's in with a good shot. And then uh, Friday, tomorrow, we're off to uh, Mildura. Well, we're not going to Mildura, but our horse is. Uh, Chalaki, first up for Darren Weir. Uh, Barrier 8, Claire Lindock at Mildura. Yeah, Lou's probably going to get a dry track out there, nice and firm, and probably going to improve on whatever it shows tomorrow. I Tell you what, um, I was, this filly, um, she put in a couple of good seconds last prep, and she just looked a bit immature, but gee, she's a big, strong girl now. Like, she looks like a, a weightlifter, you know, she's got muscles on muscles, so. I'm expecting to run a big race tomorrow. Um, whether she can win first up or not, I don't know. But uh, clearly not, will give her a good ride. And then Saturday, the big day. Three runners on Caulfield Cup Day. Uh, let's start with um, Long Espresso. First up off a break after winning a Group 2 in Adelaide. Uh, 1,100 metres. Barrier 5, Ben Mallon. Well, she's sort of nicely drawn, good jockey, and I think she'll need the run though because she's had a, had a I wouldn't say she's had setbacks, but it's just taken a little bit of a while to come to hand. And 59 kilos, first up, Caulfield, the group class. You think whatever she does, she'll improve on as well. But she's a good fill in. The former Miranda from the Classic in, in the Autumn is very good as well. Sharma Wynn come out and won first up, and, and all the other horses from that race have all been pretty promising when they come back to work. I've watched the trials. Um, I thought the trial at Ararat last week was outstanding. She came from behind and hit the line strong. Uh, Darren said she galloped really well on uh, Monday morning. He said she's not quite at her best, but she's not far away. And I think your assessment's right over 1100. I think uh, she'll be storming and hitting the line. Just a question whether that last 50 metres, whether she can sustain it and get over them, or whether uh, her condition gives out and she runs a nice placing. But she's a quality mare and she certainly won on the up. And then we go to Platelet, who runs in um, the 1100 metre race, um, drawn barrier five, Ben Malamon. Outstanding win last time down the straight of Flemington with Michelle Payne, great ride. Um, 59 kilos, that's the only negative. It is, I noticed the bookie, I think the bookies have got a favourite for this race, so after, I think after about a million dollars in prize money, <laughs> and probably seven or eight wins at double figure odds, um, they decide to make her favourite, and rightfully so. But she got 59 kilos, I think it's only, I think the minimum is 53, I think she's six over the minimum, but. Good horses can carry weight, and she, like, she's a good horse, very good horse, and I expect her to be right in the mix again. Yeah, it's the same sort of suspect she raced against. Um, 59's a concern, but you know what, over 1100, uh, the weight doesn't um, mean as much, because they only got to really carry it for the last 400. Um, I think she's right in at it right up to her ears. It was a tough decision whether to go there or the Manicato, um, but look, our grand final is the Patnak, and we didn't want to give her a gut buster in the Manicato against uh, Samo Reddy and Lucky Nine, the Hong Kong champion, and then try in two weeks get her ready for the Patnak. We thought we'd take the easier option this week if she drew well, and then give us three weeks to get ready for the Patnak. That's a grand final, and then it'll be off to the spelling paddock and back for the autumn. So good luck. She's been a terrific mare, and let's hope we've made the right call for this weekend. Right, oh, the big one, Brian, the, the Caulfield Cup, the 2013 Caulfield Cup. Fantastic field, Dandino. Um, drawn barrier 19. I think that's the only negative thing for the whole preparation. He comes into 16 if the emergencies don't run. Um, his work's been outstanding. Um, Craig Williams is a big rap for him. He's 8.50 in the market. What's the final word? Oh, he's, he's in it to win it, of course. He's, well, really, I think the barrier's the only probably bad thing that's happened, but as Craig Williams said yesterday, the, the, the horse, more importantly, the horse is in great order, so he'd rather be on a a good horse from a wide gate than a horse with, with little chance from an inside gate. And by the end of the day, well, after race nine, Caulfield might be better out in the middle of the track anyway. It might be a bit, a bit of an advantage from a wide gate. 28 degrees, it's going to be a good three in my opinion. Um, a lot of speed inside. There's a lot of horses in this race that will want to go forward. I think it's going to be carnage early. Um, Craig's got two plans, a plan A and a plan B, if, if there's speed on or if there's no speed on. I think you're going to see the horse probably midfield, um, maybe three wide looking to slot in somewhere. But um, I think if you draw them wide in the Caulfield Cup, you really do need to have a good jockey on, and we've got that. So who knows? But you know, when we bought this horse back in February, um, for us to think that he was going to be second or third or fourth favourite in the Caulfield Cup, um, it's amazing the journey this horse has taken us on. And we're looking forward to Saturday. We've got the Dan Dino bar set up down there, the old Aquanita bar, and we've got 100, 100 people in that marquee, Brian. Should be a great day. There's going to be some very um, probably drunk people at the end of the day if the horse happens to get up and win. But as, and um, either way, the horse is going to run a strong 2,400 metres. So the, the other, his competitors are going to know at the end of the race that he's there. Yeah, I think he's got the class edge. I think.
Personally, I think he'll run top either first or second. I'll be disappointed if he doesn't. So, good luck to all those people out there that are in Dandino, and good luck to all the followers of ATB that have put their hard earned on. I hope you all cash up. All right, then Sunday recovery day, um, but we do have host me first up going to um, Horsham, providing she draws well. Michelle Payne's been booked for the ride. Um, she had one start last prep, and um, she had a little issue with a back leg, which took me three months to, to sort that out, that little injury, and it was a bit of floating bone, and it kept touching the nerve and making her sore and lame. But we had to polish it and suck it out, Brian, and came out through the skin, it's amazing, you know. But we've done a few of them, but gee, she looks a different filly now, she's strong. Yeah, looking forward to seeing this filly first up, and once again, we'll leave Michelle Payne on board, it's probably gonna suit her first up from a spell, and how are you expecting her to go? Look, um, I don't like torsion. It's a leader, tight little track. Um, and she's a get back run on Philly, but um, look, if she draws good, she'll probably run and she'll probably need it. I think she's a miler, uh, so whatever she does, she's going to improve on. But Darren's got her in outstanding order, and you know, I think she'll run a nice race. But whether she can win or not, I'm not so sure first up. Um, and then on Monday, just the, we got the two runners at uh, Pakenham. Uh, tight leaderish track, part of our strategy to go there is because it is a tight leaderish track, so we've got the two speed machines in. Let's start with. Uh, General Amore, Brad Will Willard to ride. Very unlucky not to win at um, Swan Hill last start when he ran second and got beaten in a photo. Yeah, he looks pretty suited around this track, General Amore. Last run was very good, up on the pace, and it's a similar sort of run on Monday, and he'll be right in it. Just hope he draws a gate and he can get a soft run in front, and um, it's a short, tight track. It's gonna be hard for him to run him down. I, I don't really want too much rain, because that inside lane can chop out quite easily, but um, I tell you what, third up, I know this is a run. This is a run he's prime for, and there'll be no excuses, Brian. Dan, do you know in the general or more? No excuses. <laughs> and then Glockenspiel, um, he was also beaten in a photo of Swan Hill last, last start. Um, very close second, Brian. Um, that was probably one of his best runs. Um, you know, overall, I think he's been a disappointing horse. We thought he'd be a city horse, but um, it just hasn't panned out yet. Um, his main goal is the three-year-old Magic Man's here at Ballarat on Ballarat Cup Day. But we need to win a couple of country races to get his rating up. So we're taking him to Pakenham, tight leaders track, little speed machine. How do you think? Well, he's not far away as well. He remembers very much like General Moore's last time out. So if they can both run the same, uh, let's hopefully we get a similar result plus one. Right, oh, so that's all the horses going around over the next four or five days. Um, who's your best out of the whole lot? Who do you think the punters can put their money on? Well, we're not going to get double figure odds plate at this time, so I think Dan Dino, I'll take the 8.50, you might, you might be able to get even 9 or 10 on Betfair if you're lucky. Yeah, let's hope you're right, that's the one we want to win. Um, I think um, if you back Dan Dino each way, I, I don't think you can lose really. I think you'll go home with your money back or money in your pocket. Maybe go 30% to win, 70% to place if you like collecting money off the bookies. Um, of the others, I really do think General Lamore, if he draws a good game, will be winning on Monday. Anyway, that's a wrap. Um, we shall see most of you on Saturday at Caulfield. It's a big day, big week for ATV with all these horses going around. I'm off to Warnable now to watch Chloe Anna and um, Tunza Rossa. And uh, let's hope we can get ourselves into some good form for the weekend. And don't forget to put your tips in. I'm sitting ninth and I'm climbing the ladder. I'm Darren Dance. He's Brian Johnson. See you next week.